full bin of fish. From yesterday's fishing. How you going, good bastards? It's a uh, overcast day here, and I'm just going to ask my lovely daughter if I can just say goodbye to her because I know she's going to be going soon. Can I come in, sweetheart? Sorry to capture you live on film. Um, I'm going to just walk dogs and I've got mates coming around. I'm going to fill up those fish. Do you want me to put some fish aside for you? For dinner? Yeah, no, for you to cook for dinner. Yes, please. Or would you rather me cook no, fish? No, I'll cook it. You cook it? Okay. Oh, look at your dinner. Breakfast. Oh, wow. Well. Kimchi, two eggs, and some very healthy bread. Very healthy. Okay, sit down. Hello. Love, love you. Bye. Mate, there you go. Bruno! G'day Bruno! Hello Bruno! Hello Bruno! He's a good boy. Sit! Stay! Stay! Don't you knock me over. Stay! Stay. Wiggle! <laughs> <laughs> good morning, killers. How are ya? Hey, you good boy. You good boy, face, eh? Hey, face. Good boy. Stay. 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 Pace. Pace, come. Yo, oh, you naughty boy. You're not supposed to go. Pace. What did he do, eh? He was a wanker. That's right. Okay, where you going? Hello, Poe. You good girl, hey? Poe, stay. Good girl. You know the rules, don't you, eh? Poe, come. Good girl. And that is the rat that Poe caught last night. She nailed it. And the only good rat around here is a dead rat. Where the hell have the dogs gone? Poe. Yep, have a shit. Where's B? Where's Pace? Here he comes. Where have you been, eh? <whistles> B come. Bruno come. Where have you been, eh? Oh, that's a good idea, Bruno. Doesn't normally go through the fence without my help. Pace is having a pee standing up like he's just finally let it go. Normally he cocks a leg. We had a full bladder and run around. I reckon they were chasing after something. There's a cat around here, a feral cat. Have you guys killed a cat? There's one been hanging around in here. So I wormed all my dogs yesterday. I wormed them every three months. So I'm going to look at his poo and see if there's any worms in it. Because he eats a lot of possum. Right. There's no worms in that, but uh, I will come back and pick that up later on. What I do is, on the farm, is... There's another poo here too, no worms in there, it's good. As I pick the dog's poo up, even though there's no poo, no worm in the poo, I pick it up because it can pass onto the sheep. But I wait till they dry. Dog poo's easier to pick up when it's got dry. I just thought I'd share that useful bit of information for you. Right, moving on to something a bit more uh, fun. Bruno's always fun, aren't you, boy? Come on, Bruno. Come on. Hey, Bruno. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And pace is healing up good, aren't you, mate? Hey, you're healing up good. How's this one here? It's still got a wee bit of, wee bit of swelling, but a lot better than it was. The tail's wagging. He's happy. He's a good boy, aren't you? Hey? Yes, you are. Oh, there's a dog down there. Bruno, come. I see someone's walking the dog just down here along the front and that's what I don't want I want to get out of this paddock right now because Poe leave it Poe's just watched it because um, that can cause a problem these dogs would pack on up they'd think it's in their territory I'll see if I can zoom in here and show you what I'm talking about right now this camera it's actually my phone right there So what I would not want is the dogs to run down and jump on that dog. Because dogs are just like wolves, Poe has seen it. 
Don't touch, Poe. You leave it. Bruno was the first to see it, weren't you, Bruno? You leave it, Poe. It's happened before. I've had dogs pack on a pack, and I've had dogs pack on a dog. When I say pack on a pack, I was hunting in the forestry a few years ago. There were three dogs on the top of the road with another hunter and a red ute. Uh, actually, one of my mates now, but um, I had a pig down in the gully, and my three dogs had it. And I went down there and I stuck the pig and dropped the guts out all good. And then the other three dogs came down. And Poe straight away jumped on the alpha bitch of the other pack. Like, this is our pig. And then all hell broke loose. We had a pack fighting a pack. Wasn't, wasn't good. The, the pig uh, wasn't a big pig. So the only damage that day to happen was dogs fighting dogs. And we managed to separate them all. But, you know, it was very close. And I've also had these dogs pack on a dog that that came up here one time that shouldn't have been on here uh, just came through, I don't know if it was somebody had been walking the street and it had got lost but um, and I was there so I was able to break up very quickly but uh, it's not pretty so I'm always aware when I'm walking my pack somewhere of other dogs around what's happening because they like wolves inside their head, they're not far removed from wolves at all the DNA of a dog, you know, from his nose right through to his bum hole, the inside is 0.2% that of a wolf. Very, very close. The only disease that dogs really suffer from that wolves don't is cruciate ligament disease. They get a few other things, they get a few skin problems, but mostly that's it. And this morning on the pond, there's plentiful amount of ducks. And you guys know how much I love duck. And it's almost like the ducks come here to say, hey mate, you're not allowed to shoot this pawn. We just thought we'd hang around and, you know, tantalise you a bit. But there's six ducks in there this morning. It's only one week to go of duck shooting season. And hopefully I'm going to get out this weekend if the weather permits. Oh, look at that girl duck there's got two males. That's, that's not very uh, balanced. One of those males has to go, doesn't it? And over there... I think that's a male with two girls. A lucky bastard. Hmm. I would love to pot one of those and cook it. And Poe's still watching down the front here. She's still in guard mode. Don't touch. Right, I'll keep on walking and I'll stop talking for a bit because uh, I need to get the heart and lungs going. Try and generate a bit of uh, exercise. Come on, Bruno. Come on. There's even bloody ducks in the paddock. Jeez. Good dogs. Because the breed has whippet in it, Pace's breed I'm talking about, and also bees, these are sight dogs, whippet dogs, so their eyes are bloody good. Having said that, Poe's got bloody good eyesight too. See, there's someone over there they're watching now. Leave it. Looks like my neighbour Harry walking along with his worker. And the sheep are starting to move as well. That's what they're watching. Don't touch. Good dog. Good boy, B. A rabbit just ran right in front of me. He didn't touch it. Good boy. Good boy. Well done. You left that rabbit. Good boy. He's an intelligent dog. Good dog. A lot better behaved than Pace. Not the most ideal things for running in gum boots, but every day I like to just do a wee run on the farm. Not a big one, and push hard for a bit. Just keeps me fit. Leave it, face, face his rabbit running, and he's like, Master's running, I can run after it. No, you can't. You leave it, mate. Leave it. <laughs> Don't touch. Good boy. Right, feed time. There's a rat hanging around Bruno's kennel that Poe's been after. Yes, ladies, I haven't forgotten about you. No. I fed all the chickens, but Ducky wants her own pile, don't you, mate? Because you're greedy. Yes, you do. You're greedy. You want to try and put your beak in there? Here we go, Ducky. Here's your pile. There you go, mate. She's fat. She's the last remaining duck on the farm. And she's spoiled, too. These guys.
Tails are all wagging, so that's good. What are they doing? I'm wondering if Poe's coming in heat. She's uh, now dominating. They're both dominating B. He's in submissive. Bruno will come over. There's Bruno coming in there. That'll do. That'll do, Poe. Tail's still wagging. But uh, Bruno, he's equalised. He'll come over and just say, cut it out. I'm the boss around here. Really interesting dog language going on here. Good boy, Bruno. Possy yum. Made out of possum and lots of good stuff like lamb offal, beef offal. It's got heart, kidneys, lungs, liver, all the good stuff. But also plenty of possum. Dad is going on a mission after school, aren't you, honey? Bit of whitewater kayaking. And Bruno's waiting for something to eat. One of my subscribers said, don't feed him with your fingers like that. That's why you get your fingers bitten. Hold it like that and let him nibble out of your hand. But what if he takes the whole hand? Gentle. Get out of there, B. Not for B. Where you go, B? It's for Bruno. <laughs> Still got a knuckle. That didn't work very well. What do you reckon, Poe? What's you wagging your tail for, Poe? What are you doing in that box, eh? You jump out. Good dogs. Eat up. <laughs> That's... Pace is one. You watch Pace will come over to B's one now. You're going to stuff it. Because the other guy's food always is better, eh, Pace? Yeah! And Bruno's licking his lips, being very patient, aren't you, boy? I've learned to cut long bits, because you take fingers off, just about. That went fast. Clearly still not happy, because she's not wagging a tail. Alright, mate, try that piece here. There we go. Ah, tail's wagging, that's enough. I have not forgotten about you, Poe. You've drunk all your water, Bruno. Eh? Hey? Bruno, sit. Leave it. Leave it. Good boy. That a good dog, aren't you, eh? Yes, you are. You're a good boy. 65 kg of pure Dogo Argentino. Pure Dago Argentina that's dribbling because he wants his posse yum. But such a good boy, aren't you, eh? Yes, you are. Starting to really pull on the waterworks now, pal. Mmm. And meanwhile, Poe is looking at it. But it's not for you, is it, Poe? No. You're going to create a flood in a minute, Bruno. Bruno, eat up. Not for Poe. Not for Poe, no. Eat up, Bruno. Good boy. What a good dog, eh? What a good boy. And Poe, you've been very patient. Yes, you have. Oh dear, someone's found Poe's food. It's now been embossed by chicken beak. You get in your box, Poe. That's not your box, that's the wrong one. There's not even got a kennel on it. This is your box over here, you know your box. Here you go. Now, normally I chop the stuff up because dogs can choke on it. But Poe is a lady, aren't you, Poe? Yes, you are. She eats very, very gently. She'll take it into her house, hopefully, and chew it up. She doesn't scoff it. Do you, Poe? Eat up, Poe. Eat up. <laughs> okay, I'll feed it to you by hand. Eat up. Just dibbles little bits off. Good girl. Yesterday's catch. Still nice and cold. Ice is still frozen. Let's take a big blue cod out and do that. Stiff as a board. Richard's showing me the way he does it and it's actually really cool. Um, he's not doing a double cut. Just doing one. Using the back of his knife. Very similar to how a lot of fishermen I know do it. You really have to have a bucket of salt water or something to, to dip your fish into. Nice. You can't, that has got salt, you want to give it a clean, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Cut that side to get rid of the belly bones. Yep. There'll still be some on there, though. Mm. So, right. Okay, let's check it after you're done, eh? I'm pretty confident, this fella. Give it that. 
course. Good luck. Oh, his wife's going, he's done it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that's fantastic. But can I be critical a little bit? Yep. I think there's too much cod is lost on that. I think you've lost too much. Where is it? It's in the in the in the frame and on the skin. Yeah, but you can eat that. Yeah. <laughs> but actually a lot I would, I would give me too much shit if you if you come fishing again, I'll cut your line again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the bastard cut my line when we're fishing then. Uh, taking the piss. I actually think it's really fast. It's much faster the way I do it. So well, because of the amount of cob we're allowed at home, yeah, we fill it and we 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 fill it on the way back, and we don't bring our fish home like you do. Yeah, because, well, legally we've got so, to yeah, yeah. Show well, fish. we probably legally have to too, but they don't enforce it at yeah. this stage. Yeah, right. So. That's cool. Okay, there's a couple more, and um, wang them in a bag for you. Take it's such a beautiful fish, blue cod. I'm using a high carbon steel fillet knife. We're ending up with fillets that have nice. Bones cut out, fresh like that, and I keep the rest of the fish, the stock, the heads make really good soup, and stock, nothing gets wasted. Richard's showing me the way he does it, and it's actually really cool. Um, he's not doing a double cut, just doing one, using the back of his knife. Very similar to how a lot of fishermen I know do it. You really have to have a bucket of salt water or something to, to dip your fish into, nice. You can't, that has got salt, we want to give it a clean, mate. Right. Yeah. Cut that side to get rid of the belly bones. Yep. There'll still be some in there, though. Mm. It's all right. Okay, let's check it after you're done, eh? I'm pretty confident this fella. Give it that. Nice. Oh, his wife's going, he's done it right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that's fantastic. But can I be critical a little bit? Yep. I think there's too much cod is lost on that. I think you've lost too much. Where is it? It's in the in the, in the frame and on the skin. Yeah, but you can eat that. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, a lot... I would, I would give me too much shit if you, if you come fishing again, I'll cut your line again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bastard cut my line when we're fishing, then. Uh, taking the piss. I actually think it's really fast. It's much faster the way I do it. So. Well, because of the amount of cob we're allowed at home, yeah. we fill it and we're, we we fill it on the way back and we don't bring our fish home like you do. Yeah, because, well, legally we've got so, to yeah, yeah. show well, fish. We probably legally have to too, but they don't enforce it at yeah. this stage. Yeah, right. So. That's cool. Okay, there's a couple more and um, wang them in a bag for you, Take. So I just tried my old mate Richard, and if you're watching this, Richard, I just did your method of uh, doing a fish. Couple of bones in there, but uh, yeah, it works all right, mate. She looks a bit rough, but uh, it works. I've never done it this way before on blue cod, so you learn something new every day. I'm not sure if I like it so much as my method because you do tend to leave a bit of fish behind, but um, it does work, and uh, I'm always open to try new stuff. It's uh, a bit rough there, mate. The old knife could do with a bit of a sharpen, eh? Flip that over, and as Richard said when he was talking about it before, when you do your next cut, just clean that knife off a bit. Leave a little bit of flesh on there when you flip it over, like don't dig in too deep to the skin. So turning over there now, and just leave a little bit, not too like that there. Oh geez, boy, you bloody could do better than that. Flip that over. I think it was a bit of a fucking rough one, but oh, well, here we go. There she goes. Wasn't perfect. It's only uh, first time I've done it. But yeah, no, I'll go along with that. Something different. I'll I'll put one next to the uh, the fillets I do my way, and we'll just look at the thickness difference. So this side here is Richard's method that I just tried, and this one here is one that I've done. That's two fillets. I think you get a little bit more length out of um, his perhaps, yeah, a bit longer. But as far as getting it closer to the to the bone, the thickness is definitely thicker on my way, so, I don't know, there's more than one way to skin a cat, what do you guys reckon? Well, I know you like that, eh, B? Yes, you do. Nothing wrong with a bit of kawaii for your dogs. Did you miss out, mate, eh? Did you miss out? I've got another one for you, don't worry. Who can tell which one's the blue cod and which one's the kawaii? Richard and Vivian have taken a couple of fish for their mates, they're going to share it, good on you guys. I'm going to give some to Mitchell that gave me duck the other day, uh, some to Awi. Some to my mum and dad, 
and also leftover will be for me and my daughter day is night but i've also got the kawaii here that's right that's the kawaii the redder one but i haven't done all the fish i've kept some in the estate there's our ras and some kawaii kept all the heads because Awi knows how to cut the stuff up better than i do as far as sashimi goes so i'll give her a whole fish she'll do a better job than me just pulled up to Awi's house and this was here see that that is a extra, extra large dog crate. She's going to go inside my house and it's going to accommodate. Oh, Bruno wouldn't fit in that, and I don't really want Bruno inside because he stinks. But it will accommodate Poe easily. And I can hear these pups because right now the two pups are at Arwee's house. But here comes her guard dog. And has he, she at least, recognised me? Get him, mate. Am I friendly? Damn right I am. You know who I am, don't you, eh? hear my voice it's actually a really good guard dog who can tell me what breed this is quite a unique breed and not a dog for everybody who knows what it is save a life look what i bought for your mummy a whole box of fish what are you talking about that and who's over here g'day mate how are you going you in the box today are you hope you haven't been tormenting Ali's chickens hey eh? g'day how you doing? Hey, good pup. I'm staying here for a while because I've been away a lot. Hey, good dogs. We did a very quick botch up job of, well, I wouldn't say it was a botch up job, but it worked of securing the pig's pig sty because he had broken it. Hey, Picky P, he's inside his house there. It's dry inside his house, I can tell you. G'day, mate. How you going, Picky P? G'day, Picky P. Hey. Yeah, look at those tusks. You see those tusks? Sharp. So Piggy P's about 12 or 13 years old now. Had him since he was a wee baby. And somebody's dog got in here over the bloody fence. And latched onto his ear and as you can see it's uh, been a bit pruned, isn't it, mate? Yeah. We sorted that dog out pretty quick. Hey, you going to bite my finger? You going to bite it? Take it off one chomp if you wanted to. You'd like to chew on that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Actually, great pets. No, you're not going to eat it. No, you're not. So we use Piggy P for training dogs outside of the the pen. He's on one side, and they're on the other, and they just bark at him on the inside. Hey, Piggy P. Pretty happy pig. He had a pretty good life. I'm just poking the phone inside his house. Here he comes now, and you'll see inside there a tank. One side, see over there, bomb him. Oh, he's come over to see me there. <laughs> G'day, mate. That tank uh, is what used to be the pressure tank for the water in here. Because it used to be, well, this pump beside here used to pump out of the well that's in the ground there. And that was the water supply for the house. And I mean, think about connecting it back up. And there's the tank there, you can see. It'd uh, be quite handy to have because water's expensive here in Mapua. And it'd probably be quite good groundwater. I don't know why they took it away. Maybe the council just wanted to link this house to the system. Anyway, I'm going to carry on and deliver some fish to my mum and dad. This is the reason I hunt and fish. So I can feed myself, but more importantly, feed my loved ones. This is for dad and Sue. Look at these guys. My parents have been breeding Labradors for 35 years. Excellent. What else did you catch? Uh, caught blue cod, kahawai, and ras. Ras? Yeah, banded ras. Mitchell told me his house was by a big kiwi. Well, who was the clever bastard that made that? That's pretty clever, isn't it? That's a massive kiwi. Huge. Really awesome. G'day, mate. G'day. How you going? Hey. You must be Mitchell's dog, are you? Scratching all my paintwork. Where you go? Where you go? Good to have a guard dog. <laughs> Get out, mate. I know I'm on the right place. There you go. Good. So you weren't home when I got here? No, I um, ran into town to grab that gun that you were using. Oh, beauty, mate. Yeah. For the Saturday? Yeah, yeah, I just gotta give it a, give it a try out and give it a bit of a clean. Fucking so. excellent. How are you gonna cook it? What are you gonna do with it? Um, what will you do with it? Tell me your secrets. What do I do with it? I'll just uh, put a little bit of flour on it and with some pepper and 
Little bit of salt or something. Yeah. In the pan. Yeah. yeah. Well, blue pot's like that, eh? Delicious. What a good bass. He's helped me go for a hunt on the very final day of the... Well, not the final day, because it's Saturday, isn't it? The final day of Sunday, is that right? Yeah. That's a Stoker 12 gauge. Happy days. Who lent you that? Uh, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. I'm going to give it a test out this afternoon. I've got some spray going. for guns. Have you got that spray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the yeah. stuff, eh? So, yeah. yeah Bloody so good. I'll, I'll give it a test out this afternoon make sure it's not jamming. Cool. And if it is, then I'll just let you use mine and I'll use my under and over. Ah, we'll see how we go, mate. Quarter to Quarter six. Yep. Sweet as, bro. Hey, thank yeah, you yeah, for that. Quarter to six, I'll be ready to go. So. Bloody good. Yeah. I'm going to fuck off. I'll see you later. Yeah, no, sweet as. Thanks for that. Cheers, mate. <laughs> That is wild mint, and it tastes really good with lamb. You have mint jelly sauce with your lamb? This is what you use to make your mint jelly sauce, obviously. But we're going to mix it up with a bit of honey that was gifted to me by my mate, Stu Driver. He sent it all the way from the Catlins. It's his own honey. So we're going to smash that with the honey, and it's going to taste awesome. Guys will very seldom see me buy meat unless it's awful like that. Look at that lamb's heart, and it's over half a kg for five dollars thirty-six. So if you're buying a tray of, say, lamb chops for that same amount, you'd be looking at twenty dollars. Really good value, and it tastes delicious. I'm going to make an entree with this dish. We want that much. It's granulated pink Himalayan salt. Give it a good old mush. That's it. And then we add our leaves to that. And you know who's interested in the process. That's right, mate. You look in your lips. You can I mix that so it goes into a sort of a pulp? And the salt actually helps break down the leaf. Sort of acts as a grinding compound, I guess you could say. Or a cutting compound. You can see it's already starting to turn into a paste, almost disappearing. Oh, the smell coming off that is amazing. A real freshness. How we're looking. Pretty good. Right, honey. A good knob of honey on my grinder. Now, if you're on a keto diet, or on a keto diet, you won't want to use honey. You just want to do it without the honey. I'm on a keto diet, and I'm just living dangerously. It will knock you out of ketosis if you uh, put in sugar or anything sweet in your diet. But this recipe is called a wee bit of honey. This is only an entree so I'm going to have, I guess you could say it's half a heart because I cut it in quarters and that'll be enough. How does that look? I'm going to lightly season with salt and pepper. Just going to massage all that salt into the heart get it right through. There's our beautiful peppercorns all round up. We're not going to be cooking at a real high heat, so they shouldn't burn. They can sometimes if you're too much with your heat. Oh, so they'll be just right. Mm. Heat the pan. Those of you that follow my cooking will know exactly what that is. For those of you who don't, that is leaf lard. I've got a video on how to make that. It's from the kidney fat of a wild pig. Let's do the test. There we go, we're good. Mm. And the rosemary. Now we're not going to cook this very long at all. I can smell that nice rosemary in the pan, giving it that fragrance. Mm, it smells great. That's been in for about a minute, and it's not going to have much more. Bit of uh, mint on top of that. Mm. And that will just about do it. I'm going to pop that over there and pop my plate, which is actually cast iron, on there. And no, mate, ain't gonna happen. Oh, it smells good. Really good. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That's entree. Oh, Bruno's crying outside. That's our wee sauce dish. What do you guys think about my mint sauce? You think it looks pretty good? It almost looks like the mint jelly sauce in the shops. Well, this is a great way for me to break my fast. It's the first meal of the day. I only eat one meal a day. So if you eat one meal a day, you want to choose something really good. And this is a good starter. This 
This is the moment I've been waiting for. It tastes just like a eye fillet of lamb. It's tender like lamb. <laughs> You've got to try lamb's heart, guys. Give it a go. You will not be disappointed. It is fucking delicious. Absolutely delicious. Make sure you don't overcook it. The chickens all hang around because they think it's uh, their time for something to eat. But ain't going to happen. So. <laughs> oh. The wild mint is a real winner with that. It's just so divine. I cannot... I cannot begin to really find the right words to explain how fantastic that tastes. I want to keep putting in my mouth, but I want to talk to you, and I know it's rude to eat and talk at the same time, so I won't. So after I've had this entree, I'm going to cook up fish. Now some of you might be going, well, fish and meat together? You can do what the fuck you like. You can mix it all up, doesn't matter. There's no rules. Oh, certain chefs have certain rules and there's certain etiquette, but just do what you like. And if you're like me and you're only eating one meal a day, you want to eat a shitload of stuff, so... There'll be fish, and there'll be dessert after that, which will be berries and coconut cream. But in the meantime, I'm going to scoff this down. Cabbage, which I'm going to steam. Broccoli. Baby capsicum. And some grown-up capsicum. While the vegetables are cooking, I've got about half a teaspoon of pink Himalayan rock salt. I'm just going to grind that up to a nice, fine powder, just like... That. Check this out, gourmet peppercorns, cracked peppercorns. Give them a good old grind up. So you put your salt in first and that helps to break down the peppercorn. It doesn't take long at all. Good. I'm just adding some dried dill in there. It's dill and fish is great. That doesn't need much. And I think our veggies are done. Very quick dish. While I'm heating the pan, I'm going to whack together a salad. All the seasonal lettuce. And I like to eat heaps of this stuff. For the simple reason, it's got lots of potassium, which you need to keep you strong. Cucumber. One fresh avocado. God, these things are bloody expensive. But if you eat one meal a day, you can afford it. One freshly squeezed lemon. Actually, that's a half. I'm going to put the other half on now. Just going to get that all out of there. And that was my second lemon. And just when you think you can't get any more out of your lemon, stick the half you've done on top of your half and squeeze that bastard again. There we go, see? Getting a little bit more out of it. Happy days. Mmm, that's good. And finally to a salad, some olives. Give those suckers a good mix up. Get all the olive oil and the lemon juice and everything mixed up. That's one big salad. It's about eight cups of vegetables there. Pan is well hot, of course. There goes our leaf lard back into it. Got a foreign object in there. What's that? I don't know if it's coming out of the pan, that's for sure. Well, hopefully it's coming out of the pan. That's better. Here's our blue cod from today. Salt, pepper and dill. And into the pan. Just lay it down very carefully like that. Perfect. How hungry am I? Bloody hungry. That entree just got me started. Nice good powder. And two. I think we'll have one more. Oh, I want to leave enough for my daughter when she comes home. Yep, Dave can have all that. Dola's away kayaking right now on a river, so she'll be real hungry when she comes home, so I'll cook her up another feed of this. Actually, I think she's going to cook her own feed tonight, she said. Let's see what she does. Three bits of fish. Mm. I'm also going to have one piece of kahawai. Try and get the most of that seasoning on there. Pretty good. Now, the trick with fish, as you know, is very quick in the pan. 
very quick. And this leaf lard is brilliant for fish. Really good. Onto my heated plate. And um, you may be surprised at what's going to happen next. Right here, here's the game changer. Brie cheese on top. Good. Well, Dale is home from her adventure. And I'm into my dinner. And I'm really into it. Look at that. Oh my lord. <laughs> Look at that fish. But how is it? Just bloody awesome. It just melts in your mouth. I'm mixing up the blue cob with the kahua here. Look at that fish just falling to bits. <laughs> Oops, getting messy, boy. <laughs> You've got to try this one. You've got to try this one. Oh my, I don't even know if I'm going to even get a chance to get to the vegetables. This is so good. You guys, you have to try this one. This is a bloody winner. The brie cheese with the dill and the pepper and the salt, fresh, and it's just falls to bits. I think that's the best fish dish I've ever cooked. Hey, Dayla. Yeah. Have you got a fork? Maybe. Come over and have a bit of this. Try a little bit. Well, it'll be gone, honey, if you you need to do it now or not. You've got to try a bit of it. Come on. Cheese. Have you been kayaking? Yes. How was it? Cold. But it was. No, no, tear into it. Get a big lump of fish and everything. I just want a big lump of cheese. You've got to have the fish on it, honey. <laughs> How is it? Mmm. This is my meal. <laughs> yeah, no, have some more. Mmm. try that. Isn't that the most tender bit of fish? What like kind of fish is it? It's blue cod. I've got some for you to cook mm -hmm. up. What do you reckon about with the brie cheese though? Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to my salad. Okay, I'll cook mm. you some food in a minute, yeah? Or you want to cook your own tonight? I don't mind. I don't have a, a place to cook food, so. Yes, yeah, so I haven't got your gas connected yet, I know. If my gas isn't connected, what can I do? I'll cook Guess it for you're you. going to have to cook me some dinner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, I'm going to turn to this and I'll look after you, yeah? Oh, thank you very much. I'm okay. going to go make a fire. Okay. Hey, you make a fire? You can cook on a fire, you know. You can cook on a fire. Yes, you can. That ain't gonna work. That's not gonna work. Check this out, fire. Now that's Dana's dish. But for dessert, we've got some berries. They're frozen. And on top of that, I'm gonna smack this. It's coconut cream. No sugar added, just cream. And what's gonna happen is the frozen berries are gonna turn that into ice cream with a little bit of help. With a dessert spoon, just mix and stuff up a bit. What you can do is you can put a bit of mint leaf on top of that too if you want to, to freshen it. I'm all minted out after my mint sauce with my lamb heart, but that will be pretty bloody good chomping and chewing for dessert. Day is dinner. What you making? Um, I'm going to do something with this hoodie Jean gave me. Oh, yeah. Somebody made it for him like 20 years ago. Okay. Cigarette festivals, it's made out of fleece. It's all handmade. Wow. That's and, um, cool. He's worn it so long, it's so manky. Mm hmm. Like it, and I thought if I applied some of this velvet onto it and added a couple moons and a star and a sun, it might like look less manky and more like it's meant to look that way. I think it'd be awesome. And I also got to sew these. It's like, ah, um, I can't be what we're cooking. Do you like the look of it? Yeah. So I've put some extra green capsicum in for you because I know you like it. Oh, Try that fish. You know what it tastes like anyway. And I've also put some extra brie cheese on your salad. Because I know you like that. You're always stealing my brie cheese. Always. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god, it's so fucking good. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. Isn't it? Did your mouth just have an orgasm? Look like it. <laughs> Can we say that? Mm -hmm. It's inappropriate, but I think that's how it was. Anyway, I'm going to eat my dessert, uh, which is pretty much frozen berries with coconut cream.
try making mixed berry with coconut cream because it really is <laughs> oh far out that is the ultimate dessert for if you're on a keto diet but just in general it's just good are you allowed berries yeah you're allowed berries just not too much sweet stuff i was a bit naughty i had honey i didn't give you the entree today you missed out on that oh no what was that you wouldn't have wanted it it was lamb's heart with mint honey and salt i don't think you'd have been into that mm. wild mint and honey yeah this is good that's great i'm pleased you enjoy it you've been working hard though so you enjoy food mm. you're a hard working girl <laughs> you are you work really hard and i'm proud of you thanks you bloody hard right turn to that and i'll uh, turn to this i'm gonna finish my dessert hope you guys enjoyed this vlog smash the like button if you made it this far and you're still watching and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep following what happens tomorrow and the next day i think i'm going to go do some duck shooting and get some more duck because that duck was delicious be good can't be good subscribe be careful <laughs> Be careful, Dad. Mm. Don't shoot anyone's cat instead of the duck. Okay, calm down. <laughs> this is what Dana's top end of looking like. The uh, two inch from the star. You just be Is that your natural self, is it? Okay.